Hello and welcome to Drag Me with me, Leija Miller, your fun, lost, bisexual friend who doesn't know what she's talking about, coming at you once again from the bowels of Satan himself, Minneapolis, where it has been 100 degrees and I'm mad. So you're getting me fresh-faced, natural-haired, I couldn't even imagine putting even one smudge of makeup on this face in this economy, in this weather. So we're going all natural today. I hope you enjoy, okay? You may hear some background noise today, some birds chirping, some sirens, some traffic noise, because if I closed the windows in this room, I would die, okay? Today we're talking about All Stars 7, episode six, Total Request Live. That's right, the queens had to remake TRL a nice blast from the past for those of us who remember TRL, which was very apropos because, you know, the youths are really into Y2K fashion, lifestyle, and trends these days. As someone who was a teen during Y2K can confirm, don't ever want to go back. Fashions were bad. People were mean. Everyone thought that they had to be as thin as Paris Hilton. And nothing else was acceptable. So I'm okay with the Gen Z version of Y2K, where people are like curvy and loving it, and the fashion is ugly on purpose. I can respect that. Recap of last week, um, I was salty last week. Uh, the Vivian got a lot of praise that I didn't find was deserved. And some of you commented like, well, you just don't get British humor. And like, no, no, I get British humor. There's a lot of British humor I like. I just don't like slapstick comedy. I want something subtle. Give me four weddings and a funeral. And I find the Vivian's humor to be very slapsticky, very in your face and loud. And that's not all of British humor in my experience. Um, but that's all I'll say about that. She seems like a great person. Okay. I don't have anything against her. I just haven't personally liked the fashions that she's bringing to the stage or the comedy or anything else that she's really done so far. Sorry. Last week, Jinx and Raja won, and they both got two gold stars. Well, Raja got two. Jinx only got one to give away because she had been blocked the week before by the Vivian. The saga of their frenemy ship continues. Okay, so then, you know, they have this dilemma that they have to figure out. Who are they going to give this second star to? And it really comes down to strategy because do you give it to someone who's stood by your side during the competition? as like an award and hopes that they'll continue to in the future? Do you give it to someone who has fewer stars so that you don't put anyone else ahead further in the competition? What do you do? And we saw the outcome was kind of both of those worlds. For one, Evie Oddly was the only one with no stars so far in the competition. Highway robbery. All right, so Raja ends up giving her second star to Evie Oddly, which evens it all out. Now everyone has at least one star. Are these cop cars just driving in circles? Good Lord. And then Jinx decides to give her second star or only star to Jada, meaning that now Jinx and Jada both have two stars and everyone else has one star. And because there's 12 episodes total, and this is episode six, and the last episode is the finale, I assume that means there's, what, five stars left to give? So there is a theoretical possibility where all but one of them could have two stars at the end of this. I don't think that the RuPaul gods would ever let that happen, but there's really anything could go at this point. All right, and then the girls are told to split up to form two TRL girl groups, but Rue doesn't tell them how they're going to split up. So, you know, there's drama immediately because they're all just standing in a line and one group's like, should we just stick together? And they're like, yes. And then the Vivian finally serves up some of that drama that I've been hoping for. She gets a little shady about the group division for really no reason that I could tell because she just didn't feel like she had a say in it, I guess. But really what they ended up doing was just each picking the song that they actually wanted to be in and then going in that direction, which made more sense than them like picking teams before thinking about the songs. I don't know. Viv was a little salty for no reason. I had fun with that. Finally, a little shade. You know what I mean? And served on us by none other than the Vivian herself, whom I have been, you know, not a huge fan of. So she won some points 
in my book for being petty. It's probably my Gemini moon. Okay, so we have the groups divided. We've got Monet, Shay, Trinity, and Raja and their mister, which I thought was brilliant. And Evie, Jinx, Jada, and Viv are the other girls. And it was honestly really fun to watch them come up with these ideas, like dividing themselves and then coming up with their names and then coming up with the different jokes and the ways that they were gonna kind of lay this all out. Like it was clear that these girls are at the top of their game. They are professionals and it was fun to kind of watch this form I assume organically in a way that like clearly displayed their ability to really think on their feet. Okay, so then they go in and record with Leland and Freddie. Who are these guys? I think I've seen them before on this show, but are they like RuPaul's on-call producers? Have they produced all of RuPaul's many hits? <laughs> Okay, again, the recording was fun to watch. It was fun to see Raja get goofy again. I've said this before, she's the fashion queen, but it's fun to watch her get goofy and really put herself out there and go for it. And I think she did that while we were watching the recording session. Shay was the only one who really appeared to be able to sing, at least of that group. But you know, auto-tune is a very magical tool. But they all really seem to have fun during these recording sessions, which is great. And I'm glad that they were able to enjoy themselves because that could be a really nerve wracking process to get in a room full of people and stand up there and try to record some music. A fun fact about me is that after I went to undergrad for political science, I thought to myself, I don't know what I want to do. So then I took some classes at a local music college that's now defunct in music production. It was not the right choice for me. But I did spend quite a bit of time in studios during those classes, learning how the production process works. And it can be scary to just stand there and sing while a bunch of people are watching. <laughs> okay, the next morning when they all walked into the workroom and the group of them were just kind of like singing as they were walking in. Uh, and I had this horrific flashback to like high school show choir days. Not that I was in show choir. You see, I was an opera singer in high school and I really thought that I was a serious, skilled, studied, trained musician. I was in the 12 part jazz ensemble. I sang Mozart and these show choir kids didn't have even enough talent to wag a finger at. Yet they were all friends and seemed to have a fun time, but I didn't join out of spite because I thought I was too good for them. <laughs> oh, high school was a rough time, but I stand by not being a fan of the show choir, show tunes, choir nerd bit that is entering rooms while singing loudly. I don't like public group singing. It's annoying. Okay, and then there was a part where Trinity was having a conversation with someone and as she was talking, it was like as they were getting ready and she had her like lace on for her wig, but then she had duct tape taped all the way around her head. Somebody tell me why Trinity has duct tape all the way around her head. I'm not saying this is wrong. I'm just saying I've never seen this technique and I don't understand how it works. I'm certain it's a valid technique that a lot of people use, but I was kind of thrown for a loop and confused as to where this was going. Please advise. <laughs> okay, and then they introduced the guest judge. Someone tell me why I didn't know until that very exact moment when RuPaul said it, that this artist's name was pronounced Tovi Lu. Tovi Lu. I have been saying Tovlo for but the better part of a decade at this point. My world was thrown. I was shooketh to learn the proper pronunciation. And then I Googled it and it was right. Ru was right, of course, not me. <laughs> and then Ross comes on as Carson Daly but he goes by Carson Gailey and that's funny. And that was weird to see and I hated it, but I also loved it. He really took one for the team with that one. Okay, first up was Mr. They sing this very girls groupy early 2000s song. To me, Shay was really the standout of this group. She looked beautiful. Her performance was really tight and really eye catching. I liked her lyrics. Like she really brought it all, all the skills, everything to the team. In terms of the fashion, I feel like Raja was the one who really nailed the Y2K girl group look. I feel like some of them like didn't really get the memo or were like trying to be too cute with it in a way that was like, I wanted genuine Y2K fashions here. And some of them didn't bring that. Raja really nailed it though. And I think that especially Shay's wig with the maroon stripe at the front, excellent work. All right, and then the other group was called The Other Girls. This song I liked more. It felt more early 2000s, like 
NSYNC vibes. I liked their choreography a lot more because again, I feel like they really nailed the assignment. Here I was looking for nailing the assignment, not necessarily like who looked the best or was technically the best, but like who really nailed the awfulness that was my teenage years in the 2000s. Also, I was a huge connoisseur of NSYNC, so I consider myself a bit of an expert at 10 years old, at least. I loved Evie's look in this one. I feel like she looked the most early 2000s, but I think that the things that they were trying to do with their performance kind of got lost in translation. I didn't get that Evie was like this broken pop robot. Jinx's super long note that was supposed to be a real gag during the song got completely buried in the mix. And I was kind of confused as to why they they were all like exhausted and heavy breathing and crying at the end. Like I didn't follow the story they were trying to tell. All right, so the story wasn't there for me, but the choreography I thought was spot on, very early 2000s. And again, Evie's look, even though the robot part didn't translate very well for me, felt like really authentically early 2000s. All right. And then we get to the runway looks. Category is Night of 1000 Dolly Partons. This runway was made for me, my friends. I love Dolly Parton. I've loved her for a very long time. Aside from Ruth Bader Ginsburg, our Lord and Savior, she's probably the only other human whose face I would consider getting tattooed on my body. She's charming. She's funny. She's wholesome. Her music is great. She's a brilliant songwriter. And now she's coming out with all sorts of hokey shit, like bad perfumes. Actually, I've never smelled one. Maybe it's great. And bad musicals on Netflix. That one I have seen. It was not good, but it was still fun and wholesome and dolly. What a fun runway idea. Okay, first up we have Monet Exchange. She's in this long trench coat made of many patchwork pieces. She's got that jacket of many colors vibe, very old school dolly, like original dolly. The wig really nails it. The big gaudy jewelry. I mean, this is a beautiful look. I mean, it's not pretty. It's not like, I don't love a, a color palette quite that broad, but the cut is beautiful. It's a very, like if I were to think drag Dolly, because Dolly Parton already looks like she's in drag, you've got to take it to like a next level. And I feel like Monet really did that. It's very almost elevated because of the cut, the silhouette, the train of it. Like clearly it's a beautifully made garment that also is an ode to Dolly, but it's being worn by this like thick black drag queen too, which also kind of elevates the dragginess of it. This one really worked for me. It's hideous, but like the concept really nails it. Okay, then we have Trinity the Tuck. Love the outfit. Absolutely perfect. The wig, absolutely perfect perfect. The walk, also perfect. I mean, it's like an absolute outfit and look that Dolly Parton herself would wear. My only complaint, and this is probably not Trinity's fault and probably more based on the actual literal shape of her face, her makeup makes her look like a Judd, not a Parton. You know what I mean? So that kind of fell short for me, but that's probably not something she could have necessarily done much to change given the like facial structure she was given to work with, but really nailed this look for me. I love the yellow. It really screams Dolly and the tassels. Beautiful. All right. And then Shay comes out in a look that is not stereotypical Dolly, but still very much Dolly. Okay. She's got this like leather head to toe ensemble with like a white bustier and this very kooky wig. I thought that the outfit was perfect. I thought it was a really cool way to pay tribute to Dolly, but not do it in an expected way, do it in a really unexpected way. I think she looks beautiful. The wig for me to didn't really do it, but you know, it's like a play on what the actual dolly hair looks like. It was a little too white. It was a little too long. Dolly never has hair that long. It's always higher, you know? The higher the hair, the closer to God, you know what I mean? So the wig kind of missed the mark for me, but otherwise this outfit is gorgeous and, and I think really clever and the really over the top tassels are really fun. Okay, and then we have Raja, loved her look again. The dragification, the yassification of Dolly Parton. The wig is over the top in a way that for me really works because it is Dolly times 12. It is Dolly turned up to the max. 
and she's got the nails and she's doing the nail clicking and the makeup is like very cute and makes her look very wide eyed in a way that I think captures Dolly Parton's essence, which is really cool. It's a cool idea to make her makeup look like that. And the outfit's just beautiful. I mean, the silver, all the tassels again, gorgeous. All right, and then we have the Vivian. Again, I've been giving her a lot of shit. She fucking nailed it. How does she make her face look like that? She looks like Dolly Parton. The makeup is perfect. The wig is perfect. The outfit is perfect. She got the boob proportions right. Dolly is so top heavy with the boobs to butt ratio. And a lot of these queens are serving more ass than Dolly is. And I feel like, not to say that Vivian's not serving ass. We've seen her naked ass multiple times in this show. No shade. But the the boob to butt ratio in this outfit really works and really screams Dolly. The color is just like hideous and gaudy in a very Dolly way. And the makeup is perfect. And the way she's moving her body, the mannerisms, like she really nailed the impersonation aspect of this runway. You know, I haven't been a fan of the Vivian's impersonations, but listen, she nailed it with Dolly, which wins a lot of points in my book because I am such a big Dolly fan. Why are there so many goddamn cops? Defund the police. <sighs> All right, and then we have Jada Essence Hall. She looks gorgeous. This yellow is perfect. She got the proportions pretty well down in terms of the boob to butt ratio I was talking about. The rest didn't really work for me. She looked too pretty. She looked too put together and glamour. She didn't look enough like a trailer trash hooker. And I mean that as a compliment to Dolly. I want it bigger, I want it bolder, I want it trashier, I want the hair higher. The hair doesn't even work for me, like the shape of it, the coif. That's not a Dolly look. That's not what Dolly does to her hair. It didn't work for me. It's a beautiful dress, but it's not Dolly. All right, and then we have Jinx Monsoon come out in this white kind of red stripey tassels moment. It's a very 80s Dolly. The hair is very 80s Dolly. And 80s Dolly is one of my favorite Dollies because that was Dolly at like her tackiest. It's also nine to five Dolly, which is a great Dolly. Moira has joined us, so her snoring will now be a part of this show as well. I'm so sorry, y'all. I just, I'm out of, it's out of control today. Really pretty. Is it the outfit I would have chosen if I were to be doing a Night of 1000 Dollies runway look? Probably not. If I'm going to go 80s Dolly, I'm going to go like head to toe jean jumpsuit or something tackier than this, I think. But she looks great. And I think she does capture the Dolly essence here. All right. Evie Oddly, again, nails it with the dragginess, the yesification of Dolly Parton. This is like, this is what I mean by 80s Dolly. Like what the fuck is this monstrosity white jumpsuit? It looks like it's meant for a baby fresh out of the womb. Like the only person who should be wearing an outfit like this is a newborn baby. And yet it is perfect. She also nails the proportion of butt to boob ratio, which is very important to nailing the whole Dolly vibe. All right. The wig is perfect. And the way she's walking around acting like a complete asshole, like it's the over the topness that I really wanted from this. Because Dolly is nothing if not over the top and unabashedly so. But drag queens are already over the top as well. So if you're in a dragify Dolly, you've got to take it to the next level in a way that some of these queens aren't doing for me. But Evie is definitely doing for me. I love this. And now I kind of want this outfit. Is that weird? All right. And then the judges give their critiques, which again, this season aren't really critiques. They're just praise. <laughs> and then they make their final decision and they choose Evie Oddly and the Vivian to win this week. Frankly, very well deserved, I think. The Vivian's performance in the Y2K song didn't really do much for me, but like her performance as Dolly like really blew everyone else out of the water. She looked amazing. And her performance in the Y2K songs was strong enough that I think that it is a fair assessment to have given her the win. And then, like I said, Evie Oddly's outfit and performance in her Y2K song was definitely my favorite. And then her runway look was awesome. It was so fun. It was such a creative dolly. And it really worked. It really captured Dolly's essence, but in a very draggy way. And so I think that one was also deserved. So this episode, Evie went from zero to two stars, which is pretty great. The Vivian didn't get a star because she was blocked by Jinx, but the two of them do their lip sync battle. And I mean, the Viv nails it. 
Once again, she looks great. Her performance is absolutely spot on Dolly. It felt like she was really holding her own and performing in a way where like Evie was kind of like running circles around her, but like not really capturing and captivating the audience in the same way. Like I knew it from two seconds in that the Vivian was gonna win this one because she just nailed that lip sync. So the Vivian wins and then she hands the plunger off to Jinx. I really thought she was going to go for someone else, like, less predictable, but I guess this ongoing frenemies battle between the two of them is just going to continue to be the focus of this season. So now we're left with Jada, Jinx, and now Evie as the three who have two stars. Everyone else has one, and we got five episodes left before the finale, so... I'm on the edge of my seat to see how this turns out. Even though there's not the drama I usually want, like, it's fun to see these queens performing at their best peak drag queen performance. It's very impressive and fun to see. I loved this runway. I'm still shook that Tovlo's name is pronounced Tovi Lu. I don't know that I'll ever recover from that. But this was a fun week's episode. Thanks so much for watching. Reminder that you can listen to this episode in podcast form anywhere you get your podcasts. Just search Drag Me with Leija Miller or they're linked down below. Thank you so much for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you next week. These episodes are likely going to be coming out on Tuesdays from now on, which I realize is quite a few days after they air on Friday. But listen, that's just how my schedule works right now. And it'll be a nice refresher for you before the next episode comes out on Friday. All right. So thank you so much for watching and listening. Don't forget to hit subscribe and that thumbs up and notification bell. And I'll see you at the next episode. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye bye.